now a Congressman Elijah Cummings, Democrat of Maryland, who signed on to that letter urging the Justice Department to change police practices, and Patricia Bynes, committee woman of Ferguson Township. Thank you both for being here. It's good to be with you, Reverend Sharpton. Thank you for having me. Congressman, th this new comment about military gear in, quote, urban areas, doesn't that highlight what we need to renew and, and, and review as we renew our commitment to preserve and protect? I mean, we need to review police tactics all over the country. Yes, no, no doubt about it, uh, Reverend. Uh, we have, our citizens should never be in a position where they are paying people to protect and serve. And the next thing you know, they find out that those very people are attacking them as if they're in some type of war zone. Uh, and that's, and so it's very important that, that police have training and have certain sensitivity. You know, uh, Reverend, under this 1033 program, whereby the local uh, police departments get this equipment, uh, a lot of this equipment, you're talking about bayon bayonets, uh, grenade launchers, right. uh, all kinds of stuff. And a lot of these policemen, first of all, the, the, the equipment has no place in an urban area. But second, a lot of these policemen are not trained in, uh, to even use this equipment. And then they want to use it because they got it. It's like a little toy. And they want to use it. And unfortunately, uh, it, it puts people in a position where uh, they can bring a lot of harm and, and, and do more harm just with the presentation of those kinds of that kind of equipment than they do good. And so... Uh, we, we've got to really look at that, and we also have to look at the composition of these police departments. That's another thing that the letter talked about. Um, we've got to, we cannot have a police department that has 53 officers and only three of which are African American. There must be in, in a, a reflection of the population in a community that's 67 percent African American. That's well, right. Patricia, that's right. what's the reaction in Ferguson to the chief's comment about urban areas? Well, it sounds like, and I really hate to say this, it sounds like a code language for what urban is supposed to mean. Uh, it, it sounds like it's just, it, it, it's almost as if it's being saying, well, we were policing black people, so this is the tactic that we needed to use. And it does not sit well at all with the community. Uh, while they had tanks and tear gas, you know, people may have been throwing rocks and bottles. Is this an appropriate response? And it doesn't feel, protesters are not domestic terrorists. So I can see in situations where you need this type of equipment, but, and I know how things escalated out there. I was out there every single night, but it, we need to question, was this the correct response? And are we just doing this because these were majority black people protesting? Or would other people throughout America, if they were white protesting, would this have had the same reaction? And, and we're not condoning rocks and, and, and no, bottles. not at all. But we're talking about an overreaction. In fact, Congressman, yes. there was a lot of military equipment in Ferguson. The Pentagon confirmed it had sent the St. Louis County Police six pistols, 12 rifles, 15 weapon sites, three helicopters, seven Humvees, two night vision devices, one bomb disposal robot. And the smaller Ferguson Police Department got two Humvees, one generator, and one cargo trailer. I mean, do we need to review whether police departments really need this kind of gear from the no, Pentagon, Congressman? No doubt about it, Reverend. We, we, we're going to have to review it. Keep in mind that over the last, say, 20 years, uh, local and state uh, uh, police departments have gotten $4.3 billion worth of equipment uh, from the military. Um, and again, uh, there is an, you know, they, there's a view of the urban areas and as if they act as if they've got to police them in a way uh, where, uh, where we cannot, uh, where, where it's almost like they looking at you as if they're the enemy. And these are people who were peacefully uh, uh, protesting, uh, peacefully uh, putting out the word that they were uh, very much upset with what happened with Mr. Brown. And, they, they, and, and for the vast majority of them uh, were, 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 were uh, protesting peacefully. So the next thing you know, you've got these folks coming in with this heavy equipment uh, and the kind of equipment that really causes say, you know, wait a minute, what's going on here? And I, like I said, I just think that exacerbates the problem as opposed to helping to resolve the problem. And some of those citizens they're claiming to protect 
uh, inhaling the tear gas. Inhaling I mean, the tear gas, that's right. You know, Patricia, and the Hill reports that police groups are lobbying to keep their hardware, arguing it helps protect the public, and they're gearing up for a fight with lawmakers and the Obama administration. Even if the program continues, shouldn't there be some kind of change, even if it's more training? There needs to be a significant amount of change. Now that things have cooled down here in St. Louis, I think we all need to recalibrate. And now we need to really be asking the tough questions. Uh, if we had a uh, terrorist attack here in St. Louis, I definitely think that we are equipped for that. There need to be strict guidelines on when you pull out, you know, the tear gas on, on anyone, and especially citizens. We need to look at everything, every policy, and uh, make sure that even in the heat of things, when things are heating up, the right decisions are being made. And I think we can, we can question that over the past few weeks. Congressman, you know, one thing that I've been saying is that national figures, particularly those that are being touted as potential presidential candidates, ought to be speaking out. And I'm happy Hillary Clinton has now come and weighed in on Ferguson. Listen to this. Nobody wants to see our streets look like a war zone. Not in America. We are better than that. We can do better. We cannot ignore the inequities that persist in our justice system. Inequities that undermine our most deeply held values of fairness and equality. I think that's a very strong and good statement from Hillary Clinton. I'm hoping that Jim and Chris Christie and others weigh in. But will we, in your opinion, Congressman, see more and more pressure put on uh, this whole question of the, uh, uh, the, the way we've seen what we saw in Ferguson, the militarization of, uh, of these police departments? I think, we'll, I think we'll see a lot of pressure. And thanks to people like you, Reverend. I want to thank you for your leadership. Um, you've been absolutely great on this, um, but yeah, we're gonna. But we're gonna have to do it ourselves, and we're gonna have to continue the pressure. But there's one other thing that we got to keep in mind, Reverend. This cannot just be a black effort. Right. We have to have a coalition of people, and you always talk about that. Um, a coalition of people, and that's why I'm very pleased that Dr. Meyer Rockymore and uh, Dr. Blackwell pulling this uh, letter together. Uh, they emphasize having a diverse group of people. It's not just African Americans, people from corporate America, white, black, Hispanic, and coming together saying, we want a better America, we want a better policing situation. And, uh, and I think that's very significant too. But we've got to keep that pressure going on. So, and, and Rand Paul even spoke out, but you know, a reporter Patricia asked the St. Louis police chief what they'd used military equipment for in the past. Take a listen to this. Armed barricades, search warrants. That's pretty much it. We don't ever really use them for search warrants very often. Military gear for search warrants? I mean, not that often. So why have it, Patricia? I don't know what happened. Um, I think that they got in the heat of the moment. I think that there may have been some biases that played out and seeing that it was a largely black crowd that maybe they felt that in order to control uh, the, the crowd, they needed to resort to this. I hope that this never happens again anywhere in America to this extent, because beyond just what you see in the streets, now those that live here, there is a real rift between the law enforcement community, uh, the law enforcement community here and people that live here in feeling uh, policed, over-policed, and uh, uh, serious questions of excessive force, which we have some trust issues that we need to work on now. Congressman Elijah Cummings and Patricia Bynes, thank you both for your time tonight. Thank you, Reverend Sergeant. Thank you. Coming up, a family fight for justice. A young man dies in police custody.